Hi, Jeff Spira here. And um, today I want to talk to you about boat maintenance, particularly maintenance on my ply on frames boats. Now I get uh, emails periodically where I uh, where customers will ask me, they'll say, uh, you know, I'd like to build one of your boats, but I, I want to I want it to keep it a long time and I want to make sure that uh, that it lasts. So I'm thinking about upgrading the materials and instead of using, say, construction grade lumber for the frames, I want to use um, I want to use uh, oak or, or instead of the, you know, the general ply you recommend, you talk about ACX ply and, and uh, sometimes hardwood ply. I want to use good marine plywood, you know, use some okume or maranti or, you know, one of the nice uh, marine plies. And, uh, and so it'll last a long time. And I usually come back to them and say something to the effect of, well, if you, um, if you build it out of standard materials and you don't maintain it, you know, it won't last very long, maybe a year and a half or something. If you build it out of really good materials and you don't maintain it, it might stretch that out to two years or two and a half years. So, um, so it's really, keeping a boat is really about the maintenance. So if you use good materials or if you use, um, if you use, you know, lesser quality materials, construction grade softwoods and stuff, um, and you maintain it, it'll last generations, you know, 100 of years is, is not unexpected. So, um, so the next thing out of most people's mouths is, well, how do I maintain it? What are you talking about? <laughs> So uh, let me go into some of the some of the details of uh, of maintenance and why you should maintain it and how you maintain it and that sort of thing. So the biggest uh, thing that you're going to run into is is what's called rot, and and oftentimes it's called dry rot. Um, it is not dry. Rot comes from from water, fresh water, uh, not salt water. Salt water cannot, uh, you know, house the um, the rot fungus. It's a, it's actually a fungus that uh, that comes in fresh water, and it's also it, it's only in stagnant water. So if, if uh, you know, like a running mountain stream would not have dry rot fungus in it because it's heavily oxygenated. So. It requires on the uh, requires the fresh water to sit in the boat, um, and um, and you know where I live. I live in the West Coast, and uh, um, where it's it's where it's when it's hot, it's dry. You know, so I mean, even a even a you know when the, got a nice sea breeze in the summer day, the sun's shining. It's fifty percent humidity, and if it's uh, you know, Santa Ana condition where the where the wind's coming in off the desert, it could the humidity can go down to seven percent or something. So, so it's typically dry. Um, and now I know many of you live in in humid environments, particularly humid in the summer environments, where you're going to be using the boat a lot. So, I can you know the Gulf Coast, or, you know, uh, um, the Southeast. Uh, it it tends to be a lot more humid. Uh, in, in, than it does in the West Coast here in the U.S. Uh, and a lot of you, you know, live in, in uh, you know, even even warmer warmer climates than that. You know, certain certain areas around, uh, um, you know, uh, like the Philippines or or Thailand or or you know some places in the uh, in in uh, Europe that get hot and humid in the summer. Japan gets that way. You know, Korea. Um, so in those air, in those places, uh, you need to pay attention to to rot. <laughs> so, but you can get rot anywhere. I mean, I've I've had people in uh, the Canadian Maritimes, you know, Prince Edward Island, come and they say, "Well, I, you know, I, I didn't pay attention to the boat, and the deck got soft." And that's usually how you tell this is the wood gets soft. Now, in the old days, the uh, the Old timers were uh, where I used to, where I learned about boats on the, in the central uh, Pacific uh, coast there. Used to go in with, a, with an ice pick or, or just even a screwdriver, a small screwdriver, and, and poke the, the wood and, and to see if it got soft. So, um, where rot comes from, even in, in boats in the ocean, is uh, typically from rainwater. 
um, that's how water gets inside of your boat. It doesn't come in, it doesn't come in, uh, you know, through weeping through the seams or anything like that, or even, even the uh, through hull fittings and stuff like that. So, or sp splash over the side, that's usually minimal, minimal amount. And it usually is uh, easily in, a, in one of my ply and frame boats that you've glass, let's put it that way. Um, it, uh, um, it, uh, it's easily dried out after that. But one of the keys to maintaining uh, a ply on frame boat that you built, according to my plans, for instance, is to make sure you drain the bilges. Um, now, uh, I, I show, uh, I show, uh, uh, I show gaps in the, between the uh, keelson and the frames uh, along the bottom to serve as limber holes so that water will, will be able to flow between frames. Um, now, I, I strongly suggest that when you take the boat out of the water, you elevate the bow and, uh, um, and then pull, pull plugs out of the stern. So I, I, I've got uh, some links up and down below for, for some of the recommended uh, um, drain plugs that you would want to put on the boat. And these are designed so that the, uh, that you won't fall out, the, the, the cap won't fall out and all that stuff. So you just need to remember to put them in all that. I also spoke in other videos about how you should not foam in the spaces between the frames. And, and you know, about half the people send me emails saying, well, I got to put a deck on there. I'm going to put a hard deck on there. I'm going to seal it really well. And rainwater won't be able to get into the bilges. Um, no. <laughs> It ain't going to work. It does not work that way. Um, I, I posted a video of a, of a guy who built a little uh, um, skiff uh, in, in the south and a little 10 foot uh, stand up kind of uh, micro skiff. And, uh, and he found that he had to put drain holes in all of his cabinets that he thought were sealed because they filled with water. I mean, they just, the rain will get in. You're, you're not going to, you're not going to take care of your deck well enough to prevent water from coming through. It'll splash in or roll in or fall in or leak in or something from the deck. So it, it, it uh, that's, uh, that's how water is going to get trapped in your build. So, so if you, if you uh, uh, spray foam it, for instance, between frames, um, the water won't be able to leak out. So it'll, it's like, like sealing a wet sponge in there. So it's going to have, it's going to stagnate and it will get uh, fungus growing in it and you're going to get rot. So that's just, that's just how it works. Now, if you, and I, again, I, I talked about this uh, in depth in the uh, flotation thing where I talk about using different things like, like bounce balls or, or uh, pool noodles or something uh, to put in those areas where um, the, any water that gets in can then drain out through the limber holes. So the secret to keeping the, your, your hull from getting rotten is to keep it drained. Um, and that means when it's out of the water on the trailer um, that you would, uh, you would elevate the, uh, uh, the bow, pull the drain plugs and let it and store it under a roof typically. But uh, you could also do it under a cover if you don't have the space under a roof and a barn or something. Um, and then uh, periodically, when it's sunny and warm and, and low humidity, roll the boat outside and uncover it and let and let the sun shine in there and uh, and dry things out. Uh, it that makes the most sense uh, for storage. Uh, so anyway, that's that's the best bet. Now, if you're going to leave it in the water, um, if it's in salt water, if you're going to put it in a slip in salt water. Um, Again, rainwater will get in the bilges, and uh, and and then if it sits there for a long period of time, you'll get rot. So um, that's that's what happens. <laughs> and if it's also in freshwater, if you're going to leave it tied to your uh, uh, dock on the on the Mississippi River or in a lake or somewhere uh, for long periods of time, uh, it's going to get rain in it. So you need to keep that rain out now. You, you don't necessarily have to drain it every day, but you need to drain it over periods of time. Make sure it's got a, a good, uh, um, it's got a good uh, uh, bilge pump in it uh, to uh, get the water out. Um, and, and periodically you should pull it anyway, 
uh, put it on a trailer and uh, and drain it out, let it let it dry out. Uh, um, a lot of you guys in the uh, in the you know northern climate, let's say, uh, upper half of the U.S. Uh, will pull the boat out for the winter, and uh, you know put it in a boathouse or or you know even just on a trailer and put it in your shed and backyard or under a carport or whatever. And, and in those cases, uh, you should make sure that it's it's drained and it's and you don't you don't have any moisture collecting there. So. That's the secret to, to avoid rot. Um, anyway, um, and the second thing that you need to pay attention to is, is the finish. Now, I'll, I'll assume that you have fiberglass your boat and uh, on the outside and the inside, um, you would ne not necessarily do that with. The inside should either be painted or, or varnished uh, if, it's, if you've got the wood shining through. So. Um, my recommendation uh, is to use varnish. Um, uh, the, the old days, there was a marine spar varnish that you could buy. It was it was a good heavy thick varnish that uh, that would work well and then uh, and would last fairly well, maybe six months or so. And then um, um, and then it would uh, the uh, sun sunshine you know uv light from the sunshine would eventually break it down and then you have to strip it and redo it so um on the outside uh on top of the fiberglass um typically it's paint now i get a lot of emailed questions of people saying well, what kind of paint should i use i'm looking at this and this and marine quality and da 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 da, da. and um you know, again, back in the old the old timers when uh, when I first started getting in the boats, uh, and they were typically commercial fishermen in the central coast of California, they never used marine paint. They just they used they used uh, exterior uh, enamel, the same stuff you would paint a trim in a house with. You know, the outside, and they said, you know, marine paint may last four years, but I'm going to repaint it every two years anyway. So what's the difference? So. Um, so they, they, they went for the cheaper, uh, you know, the cheaper version and, uh, and, uh, uh, just maintained it. You know, if they, if you, if you get a scratch in the paint or a gouge or something, um, it's important to fill it. So you should, every time you go out, uh, with your, with your boat, you should examine it. Maybe you ran over a, an old stump or a log or ran it up on a gravel beach or something that, uh, that eroded some of the paint away. Well, Make sure you um, you treat you go back and, and treat those spots you know by sanding them down and making sure they're and then repriming them and repainting them so so touch up the paint all the time on your boat that's that's going to be important to cover the outside um, likewise if you use the varnish on the inside or any rub rails or any any wood on the outside that's showing off um, even the sides uh, it, you know it, it would include that. Um, the um, um, the sun is and and UV light is going to break down that varnish. Uh, in polyurethane varnish, it'll break that down as uh, just like it does uh, regular varnish. So polyurethane varnish might be a little better, might last a little longer. But in any case, uh, if you if you get any scratches or dings, make sure you sand them out and take out any uh, you know gunk that gets in the scratches or the dings and uh, and then fill them if if needed. You know, a little little, little uh, wood filler, and uh, and then uh, and then varnish over them so that uh, the varnish stays fresh. And about once every, uh, I don't remember. I'm going to say, I'm going to say once a season for most people, um, the varnish ought to be stripped off and uh, and redone. So you ought to um, just to make sure that uh, that it doesn't break down. So I would do that. I would do that. Uh, seasonally you know after you're done for the summer using your boat or whatever strip that varnish off and and re redo it so uh, that's one of the things that wood boat owners need to need to maintain they need to do and just to keep their boats nice and shiny you know if you don't want to uh, if you don't want to maintain it go buy a fiberglass boat uh, it's going to be uh, it, it it will be much better for you as a as a boat owner, but if you want to build one and you want to build a wooden boat or essentially a wooden boat like one of my ply on frame boats, then make sure that you uh, maintain that varnish in there. And uh, likewise with the paint, you know, um, you probably ought to fully strip the boat uh, 
from, from paint every couple of years at least, and then uh, and put a new coat on it. So that's just that's just one of your winter tasks that you should do before the season, you know, <laughs> is uh, before you launch it again in the spring and and uh, enjoy it for the summer. So. Um, Anyway, the, that's uh, that's my story on maintenance. Um, I, I, I am not going to get into maintenance of the of the uh, you know mechanical systems on it, the steering or the engine or the electrical or you know I mean that's pretty normal. I mean you want to keep your you know battery terminals cleaned off and you know all that kind of stuff. So I'm not going to get into those details. That's that's pretty much mechanic stuff that everyone knows, even if you know. If they've ever driven an older car they got to do that stuff anyway so same thing in a boat um, but uh, but as far as as far as maintaining the hull so that it lasts and it lasts a lifetime for you and uh, and looks good and people are gonna you know give you will get compliments you know if you, if you maintain your boat and it looks pretty and all that you know any home built boat i mean it gets it draws a lot of interest uh, you know when you when you take it out so I'm sure if if you have guys that built any of my boats, even the, even the really simple ones, you know, the Carolina dories or whatever, um, people just stop and their jaw drops. You know, they just have never seen anybody that built their own boat and it came out that nice. You know, so um, and as long as you keep them up, um, they're gonna they're gonna stay nice. They're gonna stay nice year after year. So. Anyway, that's my story on maintenance. So hope you enjoyed and um, please like, share and subscribe, of course, and, uh, and uh, put your comments down below if you wish. I'd love to, I'd love to open a conversation about this if you have any, uh, any questions or comments about it. And uh, um, you know, I'll, I'll keep an eye on them and, and reply to them. And again, thank you very much for watching and hope to talk to you again soon.